Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our worship service today. Mother Krista is having a few days vacation, especially time to celebrate her daughter's birthday. And so I'm here with you today to celebrate I'm the Reverend Michelle Danson. Please follow along as best you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness, and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from a lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live and the shade of its branches will nest, winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, nor knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation, Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know what, how. The earth produces itself first the stalk, then the head, then the grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what power will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which is sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in the shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable to our Lord God, our strength and our Redeemer. Paul tells us in Corinthians, when anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Do we really believe this? Do we really believe that as we commit to Christ, we are reformed? Do we believe that at baptism, we have the seeds of God planted in us, the seeds that say, you will grow into a Christ in the world? Remember, God took time out of all eternity to speak each one of us into existence. God spoke in love, for love, and commanded us to love all, all humanity, all of creation for all time. We all have these seeds within us. Jesus talks about seeds. He's talking about the mustard seeds. They are tiny very tiny, but given the right conditions, they will grow and they will flourish. When I was a little girl, I was short. Things haven't changed much since then. My father used to say to me, Mick, the best things come in little packages. Now, I know he was saying that to encourage me, and it's okay as far as it goes. 
But Jesus isn't just talking about seeds and smallness in order to encourage us. He's talking about much, much more. Jesus always spoke in parables. Parables are like cones or metaphors or images. They are so powerful. They work in our unconscious. They work not on the rational level. They work deep down in the stream of life where all the images form. These images connect us to wisdom, not just knowledge. I bet all the years past you've heard this story, and now you're thinking when it's read again, you're going, oh yeah, I know, the mustard seed, it becomes big, and the birds go and live in it, la di da di da But you know, things are different now. We've just had 15 months of COVID. We've been in lockdown. The seed that's in us is small. The mustard seed is small. But you know, it also looks like it's dead. There's no sign of life. Go back to the first part of this gospel story, and there is another parable. The parable there is scattering seeds. It's putting seeds all over in the ground, and in the right conditions, they will grow and flourish. Hildegard of Bingham was very famous for talking about the very darkness of God, the greening of God, the vivifying force of God, the God of infinite fecundity, the God that is always bringing life to things, even things that are small and even things that look as though they are dead. Our psalm says that people will bear fruit even in old age given the right conditions. What are those right conditions? Those right conditions are embedded in our readings today. They are joy, they are gratitude, they are compassion, they are community, they are being part of the household of God. There's an old story about an old man, very wise, who was on his dying bed, and he was surrounded by his friends and his family. And they noticed there were piles of little sticks all around, and he said to them, each of you take one of these sticks. They all did what he said. They took a stick. And then he said, try and bend it and break it. And sure enough, each one, one by one, bent their stick and it broke. And then he said, take another stick. And this time, put all your sticks together. Now try and bend it and break it. They could not. And he said, so it is, when I leave you, I want you to be together like that bundle of sticks. I want you to form a community. I want you to form a community that cannot be bent or broken. Teresa of Avila has a wonderful prayer that reminds us, Christ has no body but yours. Christ has no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all of the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. My challenge to all of us as we start to come out of COVID and we reform church, not going back to how it was, but going forward to what Christ is doing, what Christ is wanting to create in this world. My challenge to us is, can we be together like that bundle of sticks? And can we take those seeds that are within us, those tiny mustard seeds that may look like they're broken and they're dead, can we bring life to them, the vivifying life of God, and lead with love and compassion in the world? Amen. I invite you all now to 
join with me and say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May your peace shine among us and your love set us free, Lord, we pray. Keep us persevering in faith and set our, in our hearts the desire for your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Guide your church along the way of the gospel. May your Holy Spirit keep her welcoming. Lord, hear us. We pray for the leaders of nations, especially for Joe, our president. May they have the will to promote justice and freedom. Lord, hear us. O oh Christ, you take our weaknesses upon yourself and have taken charge of our illnesses. Support those who are going through trials, especially those on our parish prayer list. Sheila, Domi, Loretta, Micah, Jeff, Bill and family, Craig, Niall, Cindy, Parker, Laurel, Ron, the Armstrong family, Chuck, Christopher, Mary, Joshua, Megan, Alex, Catherine, Amber, Jennifer, Christina, Chris, John, the Brennison family, the Rutledge family, especially Bill, Angie, Dan, Debbie, Jacob, Ann, Nikki, Brad, Andrea, Ezra, Silas, Lauren, Joan, Christy, Travis, Carrie, Emily, Zoe, Craig, Felix, Greg, Lynn, Susie, Brenda, Kate, Patrick, Johanna, Suzanne, Linda, Mary, all those suffering with mental health issues, clergy, healthcare workers, hospital chaplains, funeral directors, and all those affected by COVID-19. For those who work with the oppressed, with foreigners and with the lonely, Lord, hear us. We entrust to you our families and friends, all who have asked for our prayers and who pray for us. These prayers were submitted by you, the people of St. Luke's. We pray for those who are suffering, living in poverty, for children, animals, and all of God's creatures who are suffering, frightened, and in need of help. We pray in gratitude for the joyous anticipation of the reopening of the St. Luke's building. We pray for the people of St. Luke's as we prepare to worship indoors once again. 
May we continue to carry one another in love as we recover from the traumatic, from the trauma of pandemic. May we continue to care for the vulnerable. We pray that we remember in the joy of soon being able to gather together in our glorious building that, is, that it is only the setting, not the jewel, who is Christ our Lord. All goodness and beauty are pale reflections of his glory. For our country, for the Northern Colorado region, and for the city of Fort Collins, that the Christians here may be witnesses to truth and creators of unity, Lord, we pray, Lord, hear us. Jesus, our joy, you want us to have hearts that are simple, a kind of springtime of the heart, and then the complications of existence do not paralyze us so much. You tell us, do not worry, even if you have very little faith. I, Christ, am with you always. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please greet those that you are safe to do so in the name of Christ.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, <clears throat> earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. So this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners. He healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He earned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with St. Luke and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. We'll join together now and say the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Behold the body and blood of Christ. Behold who you are. Become what you receive. I invite you now, if you have communion at home, this is the time to partake of that. And if you don't, we can say together the prayer of spiritual communion. Lord of the feast, may we be reminded of the many times we have been fed at your table, always being drawn closer to you in the breaking of the bread. We acknowledge your presence among us, just as you were present with your disciples. May your Holy Spirit continue to strengthen us to live, to learn, and to love beyond our walls for the sake of your love in our lives forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, so be swift to love and make haste to be kind to those who travel the way with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy and life-giving Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>